Golden Opportunities is paid for by Elder Productions. Hello, I'm Lori Steiner. Welcome to Golden Opportunities. Today, we'll discover how our community benefits from a great foundation. Then, it's the new year. Dream big. Then, we'll offer ideas to make your dreams a reality. You planned for a lifelong income stream, but that might put you up a creek without a paddle. We'll throw you a lifeline. Plus, a fall can trip up your health. We'll help you beef up your balance. And did your Medicare premium surge due to your salary? We'll present possibilities for ending that increase. It's time to get geoing, so pull up a chair and join us at our kitchen table for Golden Opportunities. There are many reasons to be proud of our hometown, and today we're celebrating yet another one the Cleveland Foundation. The Cleveland Foundation is the world's first community foundation created in 1914 by Clevelanders for Clevelanders. Our guests from the foundation work with individuals and families on charitable giving. First, we have Ginger Malekar, who is the Inside Legal Counsel and Director of Donor Relations. And we also have Brenda Cummins, Cummins, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> who is a Donor Relations Officer. So welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you. you. Now we hear about celebrities giving all the time, right? You know, so Bill Gates and, and Mark Zuckerberg and Warren Buffett and one of our hometown favorites, LeBron James. <laughs> but how about, you know, normal folks who just don't have that much kind of, that kind of income and assets? Is there something that they can do? Sure. Well, the most popular way in which people give is through donor advised funds. We see them all the time. They're very easy to establish and very flexible. In fact, we call them our, like creating a charitable checking account through the Cleveland Foundation. Um, you can establish them in literally five minutes. Um, and once they're established, whenever contributions are made to them, you get an immediate income tax deduction. You can start one with as little as $10,000 through the Cleveland Foundation. And really, we see families and individuals pulling together all their assets and creating this charitable pot and then working together to give to their charitable causes through time. Oh, sounds like a good thing. Are there other benefits of a donor-advised fund? Well, I think setting up a donor advice fund kind of makes charity a focus in your life. So when you know you have that charitable checking account, you start to think about ways that you can give back. A lot of our donors will name the fund after their family name, and it kind of establishes a family legacy for them and their children. Um, giving is a lot of fun, and so it's really kind of fun to work with the families and to sort of set up a mission. Uh, the grandparents and parents might talk to the kids and grandkids about what's important to them, and then the kids can weigh in on what is important to them as well. And then we like to then give them information on organizations and charities that might meet that mission. Um, we work with a lot of families, and we have a lot of fun um, getting them involved in, in the giving. It, it's a kind of like training the next generation of philanthropists when mm -hmm. you include the children. So um, a lot of these conversations between the parents and grandparents can occur right at the dinner table, right at uh, a holiday gathering. It's a great way to kind of share history and kind of look to the future. So can you give us an example of a family who's done something like that? Yeah, sure. Do, do, do you yeah, do you want me to start? Yeah, go sure. ahead. Um, I do work with a um, donor, and she really wanted to get her kids and grandkids involved in charitable giving. She started with her kids first and gave each of them $1,000 for grant recommendations and then moved up from there. <laughs> and the exciting part was then she decided to get the grandkids involved in the process. So when they would come over for the summer vacations at her house, she brought out this little black book and asked them to write down something they'd like to support. And her um, eight-year-old grandson, as she tells it, um, wrote down that he wanted to help um, do dogs with hurt legs. <laughs> and uh, so she went on to talk about the Animal Protective League and other types of organizations with him. And her biggest takeaway um, that she shared with me is that she really cherished these moments mm -hmm. with her kids and grandkids and felt like this is a way in which her family could be better connected to the community. All right. Another example you have? Yeah, we have a family that had some 
children that had just turned uh, into their teenage years, they were just turning 13, and they decided to open up a donor advised fund with the kids involved, and the kids decided that they would ask their family and friends, instead of birthday gifts, to donate to their donor oh, advised yeah. fund. How so nice. then, yeah, so as the mom is traveling with the kids to and from school, attending extracurricular activities, they have these conversations in the car about what, you know, things that they've heard of that might um, might be of importance to the kids. So maybe they've heard of a family at school that was having some difficulty or they'll hear something on the news and they'll try to think of a way that they can um, not only identify a problem but then be the solution through their donor advised fund because they can make a difference by giving that way. Wow. Is there anything for people who don't have quite $10,000? <laughs> oh yes, there are other ways to give. Um, the Cleveland Foundation has established um, fields of interest funds for some of uh, our community's greatest areas of interest and those include arts and culture, education, economic development, um, health and human services and for our neighborhoods. So individuals can go online and give to those of any amount. Okay. Um, those items um, and dollars are accumulated into a larger pot and then given in those areas of interest. And I will also add, um, very popular for estate gifts. Oh, okay, very good, great okay. information. The Cleveland Foundation has supported our community for 103 years through the generosity of local residents like you. As you make your New Year's resolutions, put charity on your list and allow the Cleveland Foundation to make it easy for you. For help, use the information that's coming up next. And my thanks to Ginger and Brenda for joining us today. Oh, thanks for having us. Learn more about the Cleveland Foundation by calling 216-861-3810 or log on to www.clevelandfoundation.org. Next, dreams do come true. But first, it's novel and notable to be nominated for a Nobel Prize. But to win more than one is unusual and awe-inspiring. So who was the first scientist to receive this reward two times? We'll announce the winner when we return. Right now, the trusted experts of University Hospital's Seidman Cancer Center and the most advanced cancer-fighting technologies are in 17 community locations. That's leading-edge care, where you're most comfortable. That's UH Seidman Cancer Center. Right now, proton therapy, a revolutionary treatment for many types of cancer, is available for the first time in Ohio and only at University Hospital's Seidman Cancer Center. That's the future of cancer care. That's UH Seidman Cancer Center. Madame Curie was the first woman to be awarded the Nobel Prize and the first scientist to receive it twice. First in 1903 for discovering radioactivity and again in 1911 for her work identifying the elements radium and polonium. While her long-term exposure to radiation contributed to her death, during her life she contributed an astounding amount of advancements to her chosen field of science. The new year presents all types of opportunities. If this is the year you want to put your dreams into action, we have help. Brad Mitchell is the publisher of Northeast Ohio Boomer and Beyond magazine, and he's here with ways to dream and achieve. So welcome back to the show. Hi, Lori. Uh, belated Happy New Year to you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Same to you. We're not too far into the year yet. That's so. right. Well, we all need inspiration at the beginning of the year as we take a, a, a step towards creating like a new you. And we have a, a wonderful feature. Our cover story for this issue is Rick and Debbie Sands from Hudson, Ohio. They have a wonderful bakery and they are truly an example of somebody who in their second stage of life have opened up um, and gone with their passion, which was creating a bakery. They've been able to thrive and work together as a couple and also provide for the local community and even establish a bakery in Haiti wow. for women to provide for their families. So truly an inspiring story. Yeah, so they were able to get there, but how about starting it out? That, that goal, that dream you might have. Right, well in the magazine we talk about that, that setting your goal 
at the beginning of the year is really the, the place to start, and we all need help doing that. So we have some wonderful resources in the magazine about whether it's finding your passion or getting, because of a change of jobs, you need to, you're forced into a new <laughs> career. Yeah. Uh, we've got some great ideas, such as places online where you can connect um, to great resources as well as the Cleveland Public Library and the Tri-C offer wonderful workshops and programs uh, to help with finding your fit in that second stage of life. Um, there's even places um, like the Hudson Job Search that helps people just locally find their place. Wow, so there's a lot of help out there. Now, I do have a goal. I do not want to hibernate this winter like I do most winters. Um, any ideas for me and others who don't want to just kind of stay snowed in? Right, well, you know, you don't have to go to Florida or elsewhere <laughs> um, to really experience what we would call a, a world away. Northeast Ohio itself has some great getaways that okay. we, and we showcase three of them. Okay, um, so what's the first one? Well, quickly here, I'll tell you how they're, the Red Maple Inn in the heart of Geauga County is a wonderful bread and, bed and breakfast with Amish food, a warm fireplace, shopping in historic Burton Village, a cozy, relaxing place. If you're into more of the spa and, mm -hmm. uh, and luxury. Ooh, I like that. You like <laughs> the uh, Walden, uh, the Inn at Walden in Aurora, not far uh, in, in Geauga County there in Portage County, has a wonderful world-class spa and can take you a world away. But finally, if you're looking for a real retreat and a romantic getaway, we recommend uh, a trip to La uh, Landel's Mohican Castle down in Loudonville, which is a truly a unique experience and uh, a great wintertime getaway. Wow, okay. Mm. And you've also got bargain shopping on the list. Well, who doesn't love a bargain, right? right. And after the first of the year here, we know it's important to, to tighten that belt a little bit. So we've got a great article on um, where to save money, where to go to museums that uh, offer discounts for our age group for uh, like the Rock Hall and the Museum of Natural History that offer discounts, as well as places like the Cleveland Institute of Music that offer free concerts from oh their boy. students. All right, and you've got another great bargain right there, right here. Boomer and Beyond, Beyond Magazine, it's free. Well, thank you. that's right. It's always going to be, it's free. It's always going to be free. And we're so glad to be able to provide this as a resource to uh, readers within the local area. Uh, we've got our website launching in mm. February, and that will be chock full of free information. And we're, we're very excited about that. You know, the magazine is available over 600 locations wow. um, all around town. Heinen's Drug Mart, Mark's, retail stores. Everywhere. Uh, everywhere. And, and Metro Health locations by the way. So All right. wherever you're out and about, that's where you'll find us. All right. Great information. Whether you're dreaming about a new career, a weekend getaway, or finding the best bargains in our area, the January-February issue of Northeast Ohio Boomer and Beyond magazine can help you achieve it. My thanks to Brad Mitchell for a perfect pr preview of its latest publication. For more information, call Northeast Ohio Boomer and Beyond at 330 8224011 email them at info@northeastohioboomer.com at or like them on Facebook www.facebook.com/neohioboomer next the real deal on income riders looking for places to go things to do welcome to our community calendar the holidays have made themselves at home at the William McKinley Presidential Library and Museum in Canton, at least until January 31st. Until then, you can enjoy an exhibit of original Saturday Evening Post covers by Norman Rockwell, depicting his most memorable and enduring holiday images. To color in the details about this delightful display, call 330-455-7043 or visit www.mckinleymuseum.org. Income for life, sounds great, doesn't it? And maybe you've even planned for it through your investing, but you need to make sure you use it correctly or it could cost you. Jim Lineweaver is here to help us ride the waves of an income stream rider. Jim is a certified financial planner, professional with the Lineweaver Financial Group. So welcome back to the show. Thank you to see you. So we're talking about an investment that's a part of or on top of an annuity, correct? Yeah, well what it does is these guaranteed minimum income benefits, the insurance companies have figured out since from the big crash back in 2000, 
another crash and you know back in 2008 mm -hmm. that people if you're close to or into retirement you might want that steady check coming in just like back when you were working so the insurance companies figured out a way to put a rider on an annuity and a lot of times it's called a guaranteed minimum income benefit and what that's going to do is that's going to guarantee you some type of payment in the future so it's something that yes does get attached to could be an existing annuity uh, or a new one that you may take out and it's going to allow this income benefit to be for too deep be deferred, but you got to remember there's going to be two kind of buckets in that annuity now. There's going to be the cash value, whatever's invested in, how that's accumulating minus fees, and probably taking out fees for that rider too. Mm -hmm. okay. But then also separately, you're going to have another column or another value that's going to show you what that potential income benefit is down the road. It's very important for people to also understand it's a potential income benefit. It is not a lump sum, and a lot of people oh. get confused with that. You have to take it as income down the road. Okay, but even as you go, you are building money for your lifetime income through something called a roll-up date. Yeah, some of them actually have what's called a roll-up, and that could be 4 or 5 or 6% that'll roll up in this other column, if you will. Okay. So that'd be an annual benefit, and automatically, no matter what's going on over here in your cash value or how the market's doing, that you could be rolling up at this certain rate. And then it's going to be deferred, so unless you decide to take money out, it's going to keep on rolling up. And then once you do start to take money out, then that'll either stop or if you don't take all of the withdrawal benefit, maybe a little bit still accumulates to stay ahead of inflation, but the thought is that you'll be triggering some type of an income off that benefit down the road. Okay, so either way, we're talking about deferring income, so when can we start to take it? This will depend on the contract or the annuity. So some will say you gotta stay, wait maybe just two years, some will say you have to wait 10 years, because also if you have that roll up like you mentioned, it's not gonna do any good if you just do it in the first or second year. Right. So let it accumulate, let it grow, but you're gonna have to abide by the rules and regulations of the contract that's in place. Okay, and there's a little fee for that extra roll up that Sometime you were mentioning? Sometimes it might not be little. Oh, so okay. you really have to pull back the layer on these. Look at all your fees and expenses, they're not for everybody, and sometimes these fees can add up quite a bit. So okay. you do have to be careful about and make sure these are for your individual situation. Okay. It sounds complicated. I think an example would really be helpful here. Okay. <laughs> Again. So this is where somebody had come to us and they had an annuity and uh, this was person was actually uh, 84 years old and they had an annuity that had a cash value of 62000 They had a guaranteed minimum income benefit and death benefit of 150000 And what was going to happen is that in one year they were going to lose the benefit. The income benefit was going to drop off. And here they've been paying for that over mm. 10 years. So what ended up occurring in this case and for the family, it was the best thing to do is to trigger that income benefit. It was going to give them about $13,000, almost 14000 a year for a guaranteed at least 10-year payment or longer if the person lived longer. So if they passed away in seven years, family was still going to get three. So mm. you get a guaranteed minimum of $137,000 payout. But if they lived longer, they would get that too. Oh. But if they waited one more year, they would have lost that benefit. Boy. And then also at age 95, they would have lost the total death benefit. So if you have these riders, make sure you understand how to use them so you can get the full benefit. It helps a little bit. It sounds like it's kind of complicated, but you can help, right? We can, yes. If they'd like an analysis on their annuities, we'd be happy to help them out. All right. A guaranteed minimum income rider benefit or benefit rider <laughs> means you'll have money for life as long as you understand and follow all of the rules. For help, give Jim a call. His number's next. For more information, call the Line Weaver Financial Group at 1 888 313 4009 or click to www.lineweaver.net. Up next, Upright Advice. It's time to get up and go. An exercise segment on golden opportunities. Hey everybody, it's Mike Carbon from Breakout Fitness and today we're gonna show you how to work the biceps and the back muscles by doing a seated row exercise utilizing our exercise band, okay? Ready to go? Let's do Let's this. Do it. So we're gonna start seated in a chair. We want our heels out in front of us with our toes pointed towards the ceiling. We're gonna place the band around the arch of the foot. Once we're there, we can go ahead and crisscross the handles just to make sure the band stays in place. Make sure you maintain that good posture, pull your fists into your chest and squeeze your shoulder blades. Okay, exhale with exertion and inhale as your body rests. So squeeze the shoulder blades, fists out in front of you, 12 to 15, how you feeling? Oh, it feels great. <laughs> Not too bad. All right, everybody, two to three sets and now it's your turn to get up and go. For your copy of the exercise booklet, send $1 for postage to Golden Opportunities, 6105 Parkland Boulevard, Suite 140, Mayfield Heights, Ohio, 
44124. Other than falling in love, there's no such thing as a good fall. Taking a tumble can hurt your health in so many ways. Nancy Martin is here to tell us that falls don't have to be a part of the aging process if you follow her prescription for prevention. Nancy is Vice President, Population Health and Quality at Met Medical Mutual of Ohio. So welcome to the show again. Thank you. Now you say falls aren't part of normal aging, but they seem to happen more often as you, we get older. That's true. One in four older Americans uh, fall and um, only half of them tell their physician. Oh. And it's very important to tell your physician. Also, Medicare statistics tell us that aside from acute illness, a fall is the major factor in an older person losing their independence. Wow, that's not good. So how do we prevent ourselves from being one of those statistics? Well, the main thing is to know your risks and then manage them. For example, if you have certain health issues, be aware of any medications and their side effects that you mm. can be taking. Okay, so can you give us some overall big ideas about the best way to stay upright? <laughs> well, first is an easy one. When you get out of bed in the morning, and that's a common time for people to fall, get up slowly, stretch, roll on your side, sit up, and then stand up and get up for the day. Okay, that's good advice. How about fall proofing the house? Okay, that's probably the second most important thing for someone to do. And some very obvious things are put stabilizers under your rugs uh, or don't have loose rugs. Those are very dangerous. Make sure you have lighting in stairs and hallways. That sounds really important. And, and winter weather, like we're in the middle of now, can really be, make you susceptible for slipping. So how do you fix that? How do you help? Well, first of all, make sure you have someone to help you clear off your snow, your sidewalks, and your driveways. You need to wear shoes that have traction. And did you know there's a way you can walk to avoid falls? Really? What is that? That is taking short steps, bending your knees, and pointing your toes outward. Oh, kind of like a, a duck or something, huh? Exactly. Oh, exactly. my goodness. Well, that's good. Um, and it gets dark so early these days, so. So we recommend keep a flashlight with you at all times. It's very helpful so you can see where you're walking, spotting holes or patches of ice. Yeah. And don't forget your trusty cell phone. <laughs> so if something happens, you can call for you help. You can get help, yes, absolutely. And you have one more suggestion, no matter what the weather is. No matter what the weather, it is important to work on your stability and balance. And there's an exercise I think most people have heard of called Tai Chi to consider getting involved in that. And also the Department of Aging for the state of Ohio has community programs. One is a, a state of balance that people can join and learn how to improve their balance. Okay, yeah, I don't think people realize that that, go, that becomes a little unstable as you age, so. Exactly. And these have been fantastic tips. A fall can seriously impact your health, and that's why Nancy is serious about helping you prevent one. Follow her tips to fall-proof your life as much as possible. My thanks to Nancy for sharing such upstanding information. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. Find out more about Medical Mutual of Ohio by visiting www.medmutual.com slash go or call 1-844-606-5387. Next, paying more for Medicare? Hilltop Village Apartments is retirement living at its best. Residents enjoy a wide variety of activities and living services with all large first floor apartments, private screened in patios with beautiful park views, daily dining room meals, free laundry facilities, 24 hour staff and so much more. Enjoy safe, comfortable independence at a very affordable price. Call today for a tour and learn how you can get your first month's rent free. Hilltop Village Apartments, retirement living at its best. If you're on Medicare, you notice that your premiums have gone up on Medicare Part B and Part D. However, the amount will be small due to the caps on increases for individuals who are on Social Security. But there's another group whose premiums will go up because of their income. What can you do to try to avoid that? Here to discuss this is my law partner, Michael Solomon. Hey, now we've discussed on the show before how Medicare premiums are tied to the increases in the Social Security benefits, um, but how do 
Medicare premiums increase as your income increases. Okay, well, let me first do the first one with not counting income. So if you're already on Medicare, you already got a letter from, the, you know, from Social Security saying your Medicare premium went up. If you're on Social Security also at the same time, the increase in your premium is capped to the increase in Social Security. So uh, your Part B payments uh, for Medicare probably went up around $4 a month, which is around what so your Social Security benefit went up. So that's how, how without income what happens. Okay, so those rules apply to everybody, but how about the rules related to income then? Okay, so now if, you, if your income increases a certain amount, then your premium will go up. So if you have way too much income, then they're gonna raise your Medicare premium. So for example, a single person with an income uh, greater than 85, starting at 85,000, going up, their premium will go up around $53 a month. And if their income gets above $214,000, uh, $214, the premium could actually increase to, uh, another $294 a month. Wow. There's a similar rule, by the way, for married couple based on your income. And Part D, the same sort of thing, you know, the prescription part of the Medicare. So that can go up based on your income somewhere between $13 and $76 a month. So those are all big increases. All right, can you, anything we do to avoid it? Well, what happens is Social Security goes back two years and looks at your 2015 tax return, and that's how they come up with calculations. So if your uh, income has dropped since 2015, you may be able to uh, get an adjustment to that rate. It's, it's, if you've had a major life-changing event, you can submit a form. Everybody, there's always a form, remember, <laughs> for everything. It's SSA, Social Security Administration, dash 44. It's a form. You fill it out. It's complicated, by and the way. And there's specific reasons, correct? Right. So there's, there's several reasons. Number one, if your income's dropped because you have got married, you got divorced, uh, you death of a spouse, you lost your job, you reduced your employment, you know, they cut your hours, you lost uh, you know, your income producing property, or maybe your pension has disappeared. Those are all reasons that you may be able to get your Medicare premiums reduced. All right, good tips. So if your premiums for Medicare have increased because of your income, but you've had a recent reduction in your income, you should see if you can qualify to reduce your Medicare premiums. Need help? Give Mike a call, the number's next. Call Solomon, Steiner, and Peck at 1-888 236-5173 for more information or to schedule a speaker for your organization or log on to www.ssnplaw.com. Thanks for joining us. On next week's show, How's Your Driving? will help you get into gear to be safer on the road. Then, kids say the darndest things will share incredibly cute quotes from pite-sized pundits. And are your teeth as white as snow? We'll suggest ways to brighten your smile. Plus, we've got lots more. So, until next week, please remember to make the most of your golden opportunities. If you'd like to join our kitchen conversation, visit our website, www.goldenopportunities.tv. Like us on Facebook. Call us at 440-742-GO-TV or email us at kitchen at goldenopportunities.tv. We'd love to hear from you. Golden Opportunities is paid for by Elder Productions.